Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and this is Demos with Angular. The challenge that we're taking on today is building addressable dialogues and modals. Often in our Angular application, we want to have something pop up for the user. But at the same time, we want the best of both worlds in terms of being able to address that content with the URL and with the router so that these things are kept in sync. Let's take a look at how to do this. As always, we are starting with a blank CLI project. And so if we take a look here, we've got this addressable dialogues project. Uh, it's ng serving the default application, and we've got a terminal ready to go. So the way we're going to start off is we're going to create a few different routes. And so we want to add the router to our Angular application. So we'll start off up here by importing the router module from Angular Router. And then what we're going to do is we're going to configure that router module with a couple routes. And so we will import the router module. We'll say for root and then pass in just maybe a couple routes. So uh, for the default, we'll just route to a component that we're going to create in a moment called home. And then what we'll do is we will create another path. Uh, and then this is actually the URL that we're going to be using to determine what we should be loading in our dialog window. So let's just maybe say ID slash details. So theoretically, any URL, any number slash details, we could view the details of that component. And now here's where some of the magic happens. I'm going to be routing to no matter what URL the user hits in this route, I'm going to route to a component called the host component. Um, and what we'll see is that uh, we don't actually have to call this the home component. We can actually call this a blank component, which might make things a little bit clearer as to what's going on. So let's go ahead and create the blank component and the host component using the CLI. So we're going to hit ng generate a component. We'll create one for the host and we'll create one for blank. Perfect. And now, so the general plan is when the URL routes to the default path or a path that does not have a dialog that's being popped up, we're going to load the blank component, which isn't going to render anything to the screen. But when we navigate to a component or a URL that has some details that we want to be showing to the user, uh, we're going to navigate to the host component, and the host component is going to manage the state of the dialog. And so that's just the general strategy we're going to be following here. Uh, so before we can actually start designing out our host component, we're actually going to need Angular Material. So I'm just going to use the CLI here, and I'm going to ng add at Angular slash material. And now there is a small bug with the most recent version. So I'm just going to pick a version for us here. So I'm going to pick 6.2. And this should just resolve to the latest patch in the 6.2 minor. All right, and because I used ng add, it's not only going to install the dependencies, it's also going to go ahead and configure this for us. And so if we jump into our host component, we should be able to now inject um, multiple different services, such as the uh, mat dialog module. And let's just make sure that that's there. That looks good. And we will pull in the mat dialog module. Perfect. All right, now in our host component, we're going to do a few different things. So uh, we're going to use the mat dialog module again here. So we're going to uh, inject the mat dialog of type mat dialog. Uh, and this is what will give us the ability to pop open a dialog when we want it. Um, and we're also going to be uh, injecting a couple other services from the router. So we're going to inject the route, which is an activated route. This is how we're going to get access to the parameters. And we're going to listen to that as an observable. And then we will also just pull in the router itself uh, so that we can do navigation events if we need to. Um, and we just need to import that, make sure it's from the right path. All that looks good. Now, because we're using the router, we're going to want to listen to the activated route. So I'm going to say route.params. So this gives us a observable of parameters. So whenever the host component gets a new set of uh, parameters, so the user navigates or the browser navigates, we're going to understand that and we're going to be able to interact with that. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pipe. And because we don't want to, uh, we're going to be doing a subscription here. Uh, we want to make sure that we're managing that subscription in a nice way. And so what we'll do is we'll create a uh, actual subject here. So I'll just say destroy equals new subject. 
and then we'll probably need to import subject. Let's see if it, yep, there we go. So we've imported subject, and so what we'll do is we'll create a different lifecycle event here called ng on destroy. And whenever we ng on destroy, I'm going to just say this.destroy.next. And then what we can do is we can use this pipe and we can say take until, which is going to be an operator from RxJS. And what this will do is this will take from this observable until another observable emits. And in this case, it's just this.destroy. All right, and now we have this set of parameters. It's going to automatically unsubscribe whenever this component gets unloaded. So we can now subscribe to this and we're going to take in a set of parameters uh, and then we're going to do a few things. So first I want to, uh, in my host component, I want to understand, do we currently have a dialogue open? So I'm going to create a place to save this dialogue. So I'll just call this current dialogue. Uh, and this is going to be a of type mat dialogue ref. Uh, and we'll just put any in here for now and we'll, we'll fill that in in a second. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is if this dot current dialogue, then whenever there's a writing event, I'm going to want to close that dialogue. The next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to open a dialogue whenever there's a writing event because we have something we want to actually render. So I'm going to say this dot current dialogue equals mat dialogue. So we're using that service and we're going to call it with open. Now open takes two things. It's going to take a component that we want to navigate to. So maybe this is our details component, which we haven't yet created. And it's going to take in a set of options. And so we actually want to be passing in uh, the parameter, for example, the ID from that route, so that the details component knows what it should be rendering. So um, this is where you're going to be setting up any sort of uh, state that you need to pass in from the URL into the thing that we're rendering. Um, and now let's go ahead and just quickly make that component. So we'll just NGGC details. And all right, we should now have a details component. And now what we can do uh, is we can finally set up one more thing for this current dialogue. We can say that um, now that we have a dialogue that we've just created and opened with the URL parameters, we can say uh, as soon as this dialogue is closed, so the after closed event, uh, we're going to subscribe to this and we, we can safely subscribe to this because it's going to happen exactly once. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll see result and then we can just maybe let the user know uh, or let the developer know uh, the dialogue was closed. And then we can also um, navigate to some other URL. So if the user navigates away from this uh, programmatically or if they just click off of the dialogue this will end up getting closed and the URL will be updated to match what's actually happening on the screen. Uh, and let's just make sure that I've spelled details component right here. Perfect, now we have the import. All right, with that, let's actually give this a try and see how far we've gotten. Um, so one thing that we haven't done yet is we actually need to add the router outlet here into our app component. Uh, and we maybe want to set up a little bit of navigation. So we'll call this addressable dialogues. And we'll just create a couple divs here. And each one will give it a router link. So maybe this one is to slash. And we'll call this one home. And then we'll call this one 42 slash details. And then maybe we'll have 43 slash details. All right, so what we should be able to do is we should have a little navigation at the top that allows us to switch URLs. We should have a router outlet. And then as soon as I uh, navigate to one of these, we should see that the dialogue uh, is actually opening up. But let's let's give that a try and see where we've come from. So uh, we've got our basic look here. Uh, obviously, home is going to work very easily. And if we click on 42 or 43, so 42, we are getting a uh, pop up here. Uh, but what we're noticing is that we did not add details component to the entry components. The reason we have to do this is because um, because we're never referring to this component in the uh, template of any other component. It's not compiled by default. So by adding it into our entry components, uh, now we'll actually make sure that we compile this so that it's accessible. So now when I go to 42, details works. 43, details works. When I click off, uh, the dialog should be closed. 
um, but we're not actually handling the state of the dialogue successfully yet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into our actual details component uh, and give it some information about what's going on as well. So I'm just going to jump directly in here and then in the constructor I'm going to inject the dialogue ref and we'll just give this a mat dialogue ref and we know actually that this time this is a details component and we can update that in our host as well that the type is of a details component. And we need to actually inject that so we'll just use the autocomplete here and you need to close up your greater thans. All right, and then what we can do is we can use this at inject decorator and we're going to ask for the mat dialog data. So this is another token. And what this allows us to do is it gives us basically uh, runtime access uh, as part of the dependency injection system to the uh, data that's coming in. So if you recall, as part of our host, when we opened the dialog, we passed in this data object. Uh, that's what we're actually getting access to by the dependency injection system here. Um, and then what I can do is I can just say console.log injected data and we'll just say uh, data. So that should be good. So now what we should see is that as we open a dialog uh, in our application, we should see that that data comes through. So we could render that out. We could do whatever we wanted with that data. So we're on the blank. We jump into a addressable dialog. We see, hey, details works. We've injected the ID of the detail that we're loading. You can see if we refresh here, it automatically opens that dialog. So we've got one more bug here that we need to actually address, which is that uh, after we installed Angular Material, we didn't actually restart the uh, server. And the reason we have to do this is because ng-add at Angular slash material updates the Angular JSON with all of our theme. And so if we want the page to render properly, we need to rebuild after the theme has been added. All right, let's give this another try here. There we go. So now we have the, the nice, beautiful overlay following the Angular Material theme. Um, and now when we click off, and we actually close this overlay, we can see that it's returning us to the blank URL and everything is working exactly as expected, right? Our links work. And if we go directly to a page like 9,000 slash details, it's gonna open the dialogue and that dialogue has access to that data that we passed in. And so relatively quickly here, we have built out a Angular application that has a host component. That host component maps the routing into the state of a dialogue. Uh, and then from there, we have a dialog that can be completely managed uh, via the URL bar. Hopefully this video was helpful in terms of getting you introduced to some of the concepts here of building addressable dialogs. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.